Hello everyone, my name is Samantha with Empower Multimedia. We post content regarding business, academia, and entrepreneurship. Remember, if you ever need help with starting or growing your business, click the link in the description for a free 15-minute consultation. Today we will be covering how to use Trello and some tips and tricks associated with it. Just as a reminder, this video is strictly informational and not advice. Now let's get into it. So basically, Trello is a collaboration tool that organizes your projects into boards. In one glance, Trello tells you what's being worked on, who's working on what, and where something is in the process. So imagine a whiteboard filled with lists of sticky notes, and each one has a task on it for you and your team. Um, basically, this is a great tool for business owners, entrepreneurs, and just really organization in general. So basically, Trello has four key components. The first one is boards. And a board represents a project or a place to keep track of information, whether you are launching a new website or planning a vacation. And a Trello board is the place to organize your tasks and collaborate with your colleagues, family, or friends. The second is lists. So lists keeps cards organized in their various stages of progress. They can be used to create a workflow where cards are moved across lists from start to finish, or they can simply act as a place to keep track of ideas and information. There's no limit to the number of lists you can add to a board, and they can be arranged however you like. A basic but effective list setup for a board might be simply to do, doing, and done, where the cards start in the to-do list and can make their way to the done list. But don't forget, Trello is truly customizable to your unique needs, so you can name your list anything you want. Now moving on to cards, the fundamental unit of a board is a card. Cards are used to represent tasks and ideas. A card can be something that needs to get done, like a blog post to be written, or something that needs to be remembered, like a company vacation policy. Just click add a card at the bottom of any list to create a new card and give it a name like pick up the dry cleaning or write a blog post. Cards can be customized to hold a wide variety of useful information by clicking on them. Drag and drop cards across lists to show progress. There's no limit to the number of cards you can add to a board. Finally, you have the menu. On the right side of your Trello board is the menu, the mission control center for your board. The menu is where you manage members, control settings, filter cards, and enable power-ups. You can also see all of the activity that has taken place on a board in the menu's activity feed. Take some time to check out everything that the menu has to offer. So let's cover creating a board. First step is going to be from the Teams Boards tab, click create a new board, or you can click the plus button in the Trello header directly to the left of your name and select create board. Now you can name the board for whatever you're working on. Remember, it can be anything from organizing an event or managing a blog to tracking sales leads or planning that much needed vacation. Now you're going to add your lists. Click add a list to add your first list to your board. Uh, for example, to do list. List names can be simple as like to do, doing, and done, or as detailed as needed for the work you're doing. And you can add as many lists to your board as you need to build out a workflow. Now you're going to add cards. And so you can add a card for each task that needs to be completed by clicking add a card in the first list. Keep the card title short to make it easier to scan and see the status of each card on the board. So that everyone has a clear understanding of what needs to get done, click on cards to add more information such as due dates, descriptions, checklists, attachments, and comments. And here's a little tip, you can easily add cards to a board in bulk from a list or spreadsheet by copying the list and pasting it into a new Trello card. Trello will automatically turn each line separated item into a new card. After you've done all this, you can invite members to your board so that they can be assigned to tasks and collaborate on your board. Click invite in the board's menu and select members of your team to add to your board, or invite members by their email address or name. Get an easy to share invite link to your board at the bottom of the invite menu. Drop the special link in a chat room or email and anyone with the link will be able to join your board and start collaborating. You can also add members to cards by dragging their avatar from the member section of the menu onto Trello cards so that everyone knows what to do when they open the board. There are also three privacy settings for Trello. Private is for people you invite, team visible are members of your team, and public is anyone. You can change the visibility of a board by clicking the current visibility status to the right of a board's name. Boards and Teams makes it easier for everyone you work with to collaborate together. And for boards that shouldn't be in a team at all, click the team name, then change team and set your board's team to none. Now let's look at some Trello features. 
So one of them is the card back. And so you click on a card to flip it around and take a closer look. This is the card back and it has three main sections worth getting to know. First, you have your card descriptions. In the description field, you can add more specific information about your card, links to websites, or step-by-step -step directions. To add details to your card, click edit the description at the top of the card back. You can even format your text with markdown. There's also comments and activity. Comments can be added to cards when communicating and collaborating with team members, like giving feedback or updates. You can also add mention a member of your board or team in a comment and they will receive a notification in Trello. The activity feed is a timeline of all the comments and actions on a card. The add section provides you with more tools for the back of your card. You can add members to assign people to tasks. You can add checklists. And this is for cards that require subtasks or have multiple steps to make sure nothing falls through the cracks. You can also add a due date when the um, card needs a deadline. And you can add attachments from places like Dropbox, Google Drive, and OneDrive. Now looking on the menu on the right side of your Trello board is the menu, the mission control center for your board. The menu is where you can manage members, control settings, enable power-ups, and so let's look at that a little bit. For board members, you can invite, remove, and manage board membership permissions. You can click invite to add people to your board and such. Um, and then we also have removing members and managing board member permissions, which um, only board members can change board member permissions. You can also change your background, uh, which will add some personality to your boards. Um, and to do this, you just click change background and voila, you're allowed to change whatever you'd like. And then we have power-ups, and power-ups brings additional functionality and integrations to your Trello boards. Connect the other apps that you rely on your power board so that all the information is visible in one place. So an example of this would be if you were to add a calendar, um, that would be considered a power-up, or you could connect it with Google Drive. Um, and also there are some custom fields where you can add more structured information like costs, time estimates, phone numbers, and more to cards. These items can be visible both on the front and the back of the card. If you want to add a power-up to your board, you do this by clicking the power-ups button on the board's menu to open the power-ups directory. Click add next to the power-up you would like to add to the board. Click the gear icon next to the add button to edit its settings and link any accounts from the apps you are integrating with the Trello board. And for most power-ups, open a Trello card and click the new button for the power-up to begin adding information, files, and more or you can click the power ups button at the top of your Trello board. And a quick note, every board can have one power up enabled for free. Another thing to note is that Trello works great with Slack. And if you don't know what Slack is, make sure you go check out our previous video on Slack. And basically Trello and Slack, you can create a team between those um, and then the two apps will work together. And so then basically members of your Slack chain team can join your Trello team and get things done without any roadblocks. If you're interested in getting more with Trello, you can opt for the business class option. This is for teams that want to supercharge their Trello experience with additional security and administrative features. Some examples of these are restricting team members by domain to make sure that only people with the email addresses that come from specified domains can be added to the team. You can also set board creation restrictions for those who can create public, team visible, and private boards so that your super secret project isn't accidentally made public. You also have the option to restrict the ability to invite guests to boards if you want to keep it only in the family. And finally, you can deactivate team members from all team boards in a single click. You can also do a few more other things, but those are just the main ones. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed some of the tips and tricks in the how-to for Trello. Uh, remember, if you ever need help starting or growing your business, click the link in the description for a free 15-minute consultation. Thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe.